you've been with the team a couple of weeks now. So, what is the biggest difference you've noticed just between the vibe here and what it was like with the Nationals? Yeah, um, you know, I had some great years in, with the Nationals, great years in D.C., and uh, I love all those guys over there. Um, you know, the staff and Mike Rizzo, the GM, um, our training staff, everything, and uh, it was great. You know, I had an absolute blast for those seven years um, that I was there, and, um, you know, I wish them, you know, nothing but the best. Um, but now turning the page to Philly, um, very excited. You know, I think uh, walking into the clubhouse day one, um, you never know, you know, what it's going to be like. And, uh, you know, there's a fear. You know, there's definitely a fear of knowing a place for, Seven years, and that's the only thing you know. And then you come to a new team and a you know new city and things like that. And uh, you know it's like a family. I mean, you really the first day I walked in, it was open arms, whatever I needed, um, and anything to make me comfortable and um, you know happy. They were they were definitely uh, all ears for that. So um, everybody's very genuine. Uh, we have a lot of fun, and uh, you know I think we're going to keep having fun as a team and uh, enjoying it. Outside of your well-known favorite, JT Realmuto. What player has impressed you the most? Uh, you know, I really like Gene Segura. You know, he, I think he's one of the most underrated shortstops in the game. Um, you know, he's a guy that hits for average every single year, hits for power. Um, he's an all-star player. And uh, he's just a, you know, he's a very good guy. He plays 155 to 162 games a year. And uh, he's a grinder. You know, you know what you're going to get out of him. And uh, you know what he's going to do. So um, he's been great. I mean, uh, Jake Arrieta has been awesome. You know, have a veteran guy like that. Um, he's a winner. He's a proven winner. Um, very good on the postseason, postseason as well. Um, you know, Aaron Nola, of course. I'm glad I don't have to face him anymore. Um, Hoskins, you know, he's he's mature beyond his years. So, um, very excited about the team that we have. Um, got a lot of really good ball players and uh, great staff as well. And uh, you know, just looking forward to it. You mentioned Nola. <clears throat> What will it be like for you not having to face him anymore? Oh man, it's gonna be great. You know, he's got uh, the heater that's different. You know, he's got the curveball that just hits a wall and you know, just is strike through usually. And uh, you know, he has the changeups that's you know electrifying as well. So um, all of his pitches are plus plus. He's just getting better each year. He had you know breakout year last year. Um, had a great you know 2018 campaign and uh, you know. Signed that extension here for you know a couple more years, and uh, very excited about that to be able to you know play alongside him for a couple more years as well. Uh, very young, so um, looking forward to that. Looking forward to you know seeing seeing him be Aaron Nola and uh, being the Aaron Nola that we know. The lineup, it's deep. How good do you think it can be? Uh, you know I think it can be really good. You know I said at the press conference uh, you know a couple weeks back. You know you. As a team, we have to grow. We have to understand what kind of team we want to be, and uh, you know, it starts with ownership all the way down to us. Um, you know, with John and um, you know the way he runs his team and his franchise, he wants to win, and you can see that. You can see that when you talk to him, and you know, he understands what it takes to win and understands how to how to win and go about it. Um, you know, he grew up being a wrestler and you know going through those grinds of being a collegiate athlete. Um, so he knows how to, you know, understands that. And then he went through, you know, the 08 uh, run with them, the 09 run with them, and he understands, you know, what it, it's like to bring that back to a city. Um, and I think he's craving that a little bit more now as well. So, because it has been a little bit, you know, a little long. So, um, you know, I'm very excited for, you know, that to know that he's going to go out and press the buttons to be able to win and, you know, goes down to our GM and all the way down to our manager and all the way down to us. So, um, you know, our lineup, I think, is very strong. You know, one through nine, I think we're really good. We're very deep, just like you said. Um, you know, pitching and defense wins championships. So if our pitching can, you know, do what they can, and our bullpen as well uh, can do what they can, and we can score a few runs, um, I think we'll be okay. You mentioned John. You had a few meetings with him during your free agency. What stood out to you? Uh, just the, you know, he was on a personal level every time he talked to me. You know, it didn't matter if he was John Milton, the owner, or just John. And, uh, you know, that's what I loved about him. You know, it was something we you know, be able to sit down with him and find common ground and understand what he wanted to do as an organization, what he wanted to do as a franchise, for him to put his trust into me um, and be able to put his trust, you know, my trust into him um, was huge. And from day one, I felt that, you know. So, you know, for me, I wanted that 13-year deal. You know, I wanted a long-term commitment. And I wanted to be able to, you know, dig my roots somewhere, build a family somewhere. Um, beyond all the money and things like that, that was what I wanted. And, you know, Scott knew that from day one. You know, I had the four-year offers, I had the eight-year offers, 10-year for, you know, great amount, you know, good amount of money. And, 
they offered me the 13 and I said absolutely like let's get this thing worked out and you know that's where I wanted to be so um, I'm very happy to be in Philly very excited to be in Philly and uh, just can't wait. How tough was it to be patient during free agency and this went on for four months yeah you're sitting there just <clears throat> waiting yeah, I think Scott uh, at the beginning said, hey, we're going to go into March probably. So, I mean, at the beginning of the time, it was like, okay. So I just went about it like it was regular off season, like I was playing for a team and it didn't really matter. So, um, you know, me and my wife, we went on vacation, did all the things we wanted to do, came back and started to work out and just acted like I was going to go to spring training when I was going to go to spring training. Um, so not at any time was I really frustrated or anything like that. It was more the opposite of, okay, well, the baseball side is going to take care of itself. When can we ship our cars? Where are we going to live? You know, certain things like that. So, um, you know, if I wouldn't have signed into March or anything like that, then it would have been okay with me. It wasn't like I'm not going to ever play baseball again. So it's, uh, you know, for me it was like, okay, it's going to take care of itself and I'll be where I need to be. Now the Giants were one of the other teams that was in. Their park, as you know, is not nearly as hitter friendly as Citizens Bank. So if they had hit the number, talking hypothetically, I know, how difficult a decision would that have been knowing what you can do in Philadelphia from an offensive standpoint? Yeah, I think uh, when I was going through that day, um, I think it was Thursday when they called. Um, so I just met with Larry and Farhan about two days before. Um, and then the Dodgers came in right after them, talked to them, um, and they were saying, you know, we can go four years kind of thing like that. And so I was like, you know, that's probably not going to work for me. You know, I want long term. Um, you know, I was very appreciative of that, you know, the money and things like that. But I just, I wanted long term. And uh, so the next day was Thursday. Scott called me. It was like 9 a.m. And I was still sleeping and uh, still laying in bed. And he calls me and he's like, hey, you know, we have an offer from the Phillies. You know, this is what they're willing to do, things like that. So I said, hey, have you heard back from San Fran? And uh, he goes, we haven't heard back from them yet. I said, okay. I said, well, once you hear back from San Fran, let me know. And uh, so he said, all right, well, talk about this, make a decision like with Kayla and figure out, okay, do we want to hear from San Fran or, you know, whatever. So me and Kayla already had like kind of, okay, either we're going to go to Philly or we're going to go to San Fran, you know, one of those. And what works best for us, what works best for our family, where did we feel like we could build a family and be around a city that really cared about us as individuals and not just Bryce, the baseball player. Um, so we sat there and we talked for a little bit. And I remember standing there and her, you know, me hugging her and saying, hey, we're going to Philly. And that was before we even heard from San Fran. And uh, so San Fran called back, um, offered, you know, whatever it was. And by that point, it was kind of like, you know, I'm already a Philadelphia Philly. In my heart, I was already a Philadelphia Philly. And that had nothing to do, it was nothing against San Francisco. They're a great organization, um, great city, things like that. But it just came down to, you know, my feeling and what I felt like. And at that point, it was, it was Philly. Okay. Now the park does factor in at some level. How about <clears throat> just Bryce thinking Hall of Fame down the line, does it become more of an enhancement in Philadelphia? Uh, you know, for me it wasn't. They gave, they gave me my overlays on each park. And, you know, I saw my overlays in each park. If that was Nationals Park, if that was L.A., if that was San Fran or Philly. And the overlays weren't as crazy as people would think. You know, hitting the ball to left center in San Francisco is pretty, you know, it's a little bit of a jet stream, and I hit my right. balls to left center a lot. Um, so, I mean, of course you factor in wind and things like that or um, cold weather and stuff, but, I mean, that was never really a factor. I'm not scared of ballparks. So it was kind of like, okay, well, if I go into San Fran, then it's going to make me a better hitter because I have to stay on the ball. You have triple alleys to right, but if I stay on the ball, hit the ball to left, you know, and then pull my homers to right. I hit tower homers to right, so mm -hmm. my line drives to left would have played. Um, so I mean, ballpark-wise, it wasn't really, you know, that big of a decision for me. Okay. As you said at the press conference, Scott Boris, your agent, he invented the opt-out, and yet you said that you did not want one. Why? Yeah. So at the beginning of the whole thing, Scott was sitting there and we were talking about it, and he, uh, you know, he said, "So what do you want? You know, what do you what do you want as individuals, you and Kayla, as a family?" And, uh, you know, I told him, I said, I want to be somewhere long term. I don't want to have to go through this again. I don't want to have to, you know, uproot my family after four or five years and say, hey, we're going here. Um, or, hey, Kayla, we got to go here and this is what we're going to do. Um, and I didn't think that was fair. You know, I didn't think that was fair to a city. I didn't think that was fair to an ownership for me to just say, OK, four years, I'm done. I'm out of here and I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, you know, I really wanted to be instilled into a city. I really wanted to be 
you know, part of the city for a long period of time. And, you know, throughout the whole last season, you know, I said that, I made that be known. Like, I would love to went back to DC. I would have loved to have been there my whole career. Um, but it just didn't work out. You know, both sides have to, you know, find common ground. We just didn't, weren't able to do that. Um, so, you know, I turned that page and I was like, okay, so where can I go and really understand that I can be there for a long period of time um, beyond the money and things like that. But being successful as a team, being happy as an individual off the field, um, and for me, that was huge. And so when Scott said, okay, well, you know, an opt out would be huge after three years or whatever at 29, um, you know, get back into the market, things like that. I told him, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. And he said, okay. He said, then we'll explore the, you know, options that we have and we'll figure it out. So he knew from the beginning, I didn't want to be traded and I didn't, you know, want the opt out at all. I wanted to be able to go through the ups and downs with the city. I wanted to be able to, you know, build my family in a city. I wanted to be able to be instilled into a city, the community, and really let that city know that I'm part of them. And, you know, for Philly, it, it means something to put the Phillies across your chest. They understand it, they grind with you, year in and year out with all their teams. If that's the Eagles, the Sixers, the Flyers, and the Phillies. And I think people know that. And for me, you know, the vibe that I got with Philly, it's a big old neighborhood. And these, you know, the people of Philly really understand and instill themselves into their fan bases and really understand the players. And they try to on a personal level. And I love that. And this organization does that as well. And that really fires me up and makes me want to play hard for this city and, you know, do something special for it as well. Now, not to play the role of Scott, but I imagine he might have said to you, or at least I'll ask you, why sacrifice the control? Why not get the opt-out and the long-term deal? You could have done that. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, after three years, how, why would I do that with a team when I'm going, I'm saying, okay, well, I could go for three years, but how much trust can they have in me for that? As much as I put my trust in them, and I'm asking them to trust me, and they're asking me to trust them. So for me, it was about finding that common ground and going, okay, you put your trust into me, I put my trust into you, and this is what we're gonna do. I don't want the opt-out, there's no reason to. I have all the money in the world to do whatever I want with it, and I have more money than I'll ever know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't about that. It was about me going to a city and instilling myself into that city and being able to build relationships with the people in that city for that period of time. And I mean, all everybody talked about for the first seven years of my career was, he's gonna go here, he's gonna go there. So for me, it would have been a, you know, kind of for my clubhouse and this clubhouse right now, if I had an opt-out after three years, that's all everybody would be talking about. Where is he going to go in three years? He's going to go here in three years. He's going to go here in three years. He's going to go back to D.C. in three years. So that had no, you know, that had nothing for me. It would have done more damage than good for me, and I just didn't want to be part of that. $330 million, it's a crazy number, obviously. And yet the deal, the AAV, is just over $25 million. Trout's going to be well beyond that, is well beyond that. Manny's beyond that. There are guys coming, and you know this because you're smart and you study this. The guys are going to blow by you. Mookie Betts, Lindor, whatever. Does that bother you? No. I mean, why should it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm happy with where I am. I'm in a great city. I'm with a great team. You know, I'm with a great fan base. And, I mean, that's all you can ask for. You know, for me, you know, Arenado was able to stay with the Rockies. Trout was able to stay with the Angels. Mookie's going to stay with the with the you know Red Sox if if they're going to have him, of course. Um, you know, Judge hopefully is going to stay with the Yankees. Like, that's what you want. You want guys to be able to be there for a long term and a long period of time. You know, it's that's what baseball is. It's fun. It's being able to go out there, do whatever you can for your team and your club. Also, be able to get paid what you're worth. And for me, I mean, making 26 a year, Phillies are able to go out and get whoever they want as well. So, I mean. I'm able to go out, we're able to hopefully possibly extend Reese, Real Muto, whoever we get, and we're able to build this core, you know, the core four, core five that we're gonna have for a long period of time and be able to do that and hopefully bring multiple titles back to this city. And, you know, for me, that's, from day one, that's all I've said. I wanna win, I wanna be able to be part of the city for a long period of time. And, you know, I'm able to make the money that I am and be able to be successful and happy with what I've done. And, you know, the best advice that I got from Jason was make a decision and never look back. And that's what I'm going to do. You know, if, if Mookie does it, if, you know, if Trout does it, I mean, I'm so happy for him. I'm, I'm excited for Trout. I told him that. You know, I texted him and said, hey, man, I'm so excited for you and Jess. I'm happy for you. You deserve it. There's no other player in the league that is more deserving than Mike Trout. And everybody knows that. And so if that's Mookie, if that's Judge or whoever it is, you know, that's what it's all about. So I'm very happy for them, AAV or anything like that whatever, I got my years, and at the beginning, that's, that's all I wanted, so. 
That first day, they sold more jerseys than anyone's ever sold the first day. What did that mean to you? That's what you, you know, that's what you get when you play for a great fan base. You know, you see that. And, uh, you know, that just goes to show how great of a city Philadelphia is. And, you know, I'm very, uh, very happy, very excited to be able to play in front of a fan base like this. And, you know, I'm excited to get it going. You know, excited to see all the Harper threes out there and uh, be able to be part of something bigger than myself um, with the Philadelphia Phillies. And, um, you know, it just goes to show, like I said, how great of a fan base this is, how great of a city it is. And uh, I'm more than happy to be part of it. Now, you mentioned Jason. And Jason said in an interview shortly after he signed, he was asked, all right, when do you think Bryce might get booed the first time? And he said, opening day. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I have to ask you, how thick is your skin? Uh, I mean, I think you see it every single day. I get booed all the time. And, you know, of course, it's different when you're at home and things like that. But like I said, these fans, they live and die with you. They understand how this game works. And, you know, that's what they look forward to every single night. They look forward to the Eagles games on Sundays. They look forward to, you know, the Sixers games and the Flyers games. And they look forward to the Phillies games each week. So, I mean, if you're looking forward to that, if you're buying a ticket for that, then you expect your superstars to perform well. And for me, I've always had high expectations my whole life. You know, every single day I come into this game, I've had high expectations to play what? Play the game the right way, play well. And, you know, we live in the era of social media and, you know, media people and media coverage on everything. And, I mean, it's bound to happen. I mean, I hope, you know, hopefully it doesn't, but it's bound to happen. So. Gabe said something to me just now that I thought was really interesting. He said you mentioned to him that because you experienced, as a young person, a lot of diversity, a lot of different experiences, because you were so good so fast, that it kind of made you blend into a major league clubhouse that much easier. So what was it about your background that kind of made this journey a little bit different than it would have been for others? Uh, I mean, coming up at 19, you know, it's always, it's always tough. You know, I think, uh, you know, nobody ever did that before. You know, it was something like, okay, well, you know, Griffey, all those guys come up at 19 and, you know, it's, it's a different game. It's a different ball game. Um, you know, and then I came up and, um, you know, having to deal with the social media, having to deal with a new era of media and just the craziness and, you know, everybody's watching you do this, everybody's watching you do that. Um, it was different. So, I mean, the first three years of my career, it was, it was definitely hard. You know, it was definitely, uh, I was very lucky to have a guy like Jason Worth. I was very lucky to have a guy like Ian Desmond um, kind of, you know, help me along in that sense um, and do some things that, you know, help me out along the way. Um, so, you know, for me, it was just being able to understand and learn the game a little bit more, um, you know, those first three years and try to get my feet under me and, you know, try to understand it, um, you know, not wearing myself out where July comes and I'm absolutely, you know, dog tired or, you know, the next year August comes and I'm dog tired again. Um, you know, really trying to prolong, you know, what I do and uh, being consistent and things like that. Um, you know, it was really cool to be able to see Juan Soto come up last year and really, you know, try to instill in him, like, be Juan Soto. I don't care where you come from. I don't care how old you are, what's your background, um, you know, how young you are or anything like that. If you can help us win, that's all I care. You know, I want you to be able to be Juan Soto, do all your little things that you do and, you know, stare down the pitcher and, you know, do whatever. Whatever makes you happy and makes you have fun, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, I want people to be able to walk into this clubhouse and know that I have their back on a personal level, no matter what. Until you change my mind, you know, it's going to be different. But for me, it's on a personal level, it doesn't matter who walks into our clubhouse, you're part of this family. And, you know, it's from day one, I want that to be instilled into this clubhouse because they know when they, if they're 17, 18, if that's, you know, 19 or whatever, like Mickey Moniak or anybody who it is, I want them to be able to walk in and go, man, this team has my back. Doesn't matter if I'm 0 for 4 or 4 for 4, or if I have to answer the hard questions or I don't have to answer the hard questions, I'm part of this team. I'm part of this culture. And, you know, for our clubhouse, that's going to be huge. You know, when I'm going to be here for a long period of time. So, you know, if we can instill that early and instill that in our minor leagues as well, where we, you know, we're a family, we go through this, we go through the ups and downs, the highs and the lows all together. And, you know, we fight together and we grind together. Um, that's what it's all about.